Oh. Hi, welcome back to the shop. Uh, it's good to see you again. Um, over the years, I've wanted to build a lathe carriage stop, and um, but I really wanted one with a DTI on it. So um, I've gone and made one. So uh, let me show you. I measured the bed of the lathe as carefully as I could and uh, I've drawn it up in CAD. This is the crappy piece of steel that I've got to make this thing from. Firstly I drew up the body and uh, made it so that it's just slightly smaller than the stock that I've got to make this from. I then drew up the lathe bed and used it to cut through the stock, so uh, leaving me with the, the the finished shape that I need to make the part. However, because I'm milling this, uh, I can't get into the corners. So uh, I then applied some uh, some fillets and radiuses so that I could get in there with a six mil diameter cutter. And the net result is this. So let's go and make it. Right, so if I go to MDI and type in G, if I can get it up, G0Z50, it should go up to 50 mil above. There we go. Now, uh, between there and there should now be exactly 50 mil. Let's just measure. Yep, as close as I can get, tickety boo. Now, if I zero my x-axis, my z-axis, sorry, if I zero my z-axis there, then uh, we can do a trial run to see whether or not the cut is going to, the mill is going to do something silly uh, before I actually get into the work. So let me go to program run and press cycle start. Uh, soft warnings, yeah, we like soft warnings, and away we go. Just in case you were wondering, this, uh, this piece of crappy old steel uh, was intended to be one of these tool holders, but uh, the cutter came loose in the, uh, in the collet uh, and plunged in too far. That's what one of the things that prompted me to make my power drawbar, uh, because you need significant force to hold these tools in. So uh, yeah, we're all ready to go, so let me just hit cycle start and let's see what happens. Soft warning limits, yeah, happy with that.
Right, that's it for the first cycle. So uh, while the old girl gets on with it, I'll um, top up the coolant and uh, we'll catch up later. I'm gonna let the spindle motor on this mill cool down because it's too hot to touch. It's taken uh, 1 hour 32 minutes to uh, uh, make this part or rough this pass out. So uh, yeah, it's looking good so far. Everything's cooled down. It's time to change the tool. This tool is 6 mil with an awful lot of stick out, which it has to have in order to um, get this depth of depth of cut. Um, right, now I'm being ever so ginger with this, I'm only taking half a millimetre cut on each pass, so consequently it's going to take an hour to do this next um, finishing op. I've um, set this up and done a test run at 50 mil above, so now we are ready to go. I'd like to say I'm being extremely ginger because this cutter is um, is 35, no, 42 millimetres, I think, between the, the bottom of the holder and the end of the cutter. So I'm only going to take half a millimetre off on each pass uh, in order to keep the tool deflection down. So um, uh, I'm also going to have to put the uh, shut the door on the machine because this uh, the the speed, the spindle speed is 4,800. So it's um, it's chucking coolant everywhere. Okay, here we go. Let's press cycle start and see if we break it all. Quite pleased with that. There's some uh, there's some marks on the surface, but uh, I'm not overly really fussed about that. It's uh, it's come out all right. It's the following day, and it's time to change tool. We will um, put this fly cutter in. To finish this now, I only need to. Um, take the top off, uh, turn it over and take the top hat off the other side. So um, it's, a, it's quite an easy job to be honest. So uh, uh, rather than, like I said, doing a program, I'll just type in the commands. I have um, checked we have enough clearance. So uh, let's get on with this. Uh, I'm cutting this way because the, the uh, on this side going that way, um, because the the load is forcing the work into the fixture on the vise and the chips get thrown to the back of the machine, not over me. M3 speed 1000, which is a bit quick. That'll do. G0Z minus 0.7. G1 X minus 80 feed 30. Go and turn flat on. Ooh, that's a bit quick. Let's have that down a bit. There we go. Right, that's that done. And uh, that's good enough for me. Right, I did a bit of deburring and I've turned the part over and put it in the vise as, uh, as far as possible because I'm going to be taking heavier cuts. Uh, I've repositioned my stop so that uh, I'm not going to take the top off it with the, uh, with the fly cutter. Um, now it's a, qu a question of just um, decking this off. So here we go, one um, D-bird, 
basic stop. So uh, let's uh, go and try that on the jolly old lathe. So here's the problem. It doesn't fit. However, if I take it to the end of the bed here, that fits perfectly. So what I need to do is just relieve this edge here a little bit. Uh, if I take a millimetre off, then uh, we'll see if we can get it to slot in, because at the moment I can't put it the other side of the saddle. So uh, let me go and take a couple of, sorry, take a millimetre off and, uh, and we'll see what happens. After a couple of uh, passes on the mill, it now fits. Hurrah! So I'm going to hold it in place with a, with a screw that's going to impinge on the uh, uh, tapered screw that will impinge on the bottom half of this um, uh, way. So it should pin it down and lock it firmly. So uh, let me mark that and then we'll, um, we'll uh, uh, fit a screw. Okie dokie, I've marked out the position of the hole just below where the, um, uh, the, the bottom of the, of the way casting is so that uh, a tapered screw will push this part downwards and lock it hopefully. Okay, here it is. Um, I added uh, another hole on the uh, on the side here um, for the Dalby indicator. Um, the screw is something that I found in my scrap bin. It's just uh, uh, an M6 slotted with a uh, and I put a taper on this end, so that fits in there and comes through and locks it against the bottom of the bed and um, I just stand it up there so you can see it. I turned up a, uh, a simple little um, uh, brass bush and um, here's my DTI with a lug mounting that just fits on the back here. So uh, let me just tighten this up. Right. Well, here goes, clips on, hopefully quite well, whoops, that's not going anywhere, so uh, let's give it a go. Well, there you go, that works, excellent. It's, um, it's quite a nice place to use. It's very easy to see when you're standing over the lathe. Um, it's as solid as hell. The only thing that is a bit of a pain is um, it, um, it impinges, the, the, the plunger actually touches the slope and surface on the saddle. So I may have to um, come up with a better way of doing that. Overall, chuffed to bits with that. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Uh, do hit the bell and subscribe spanner and uh, we'll see you on the next one. But uh, I'm quite chuffed with this. That's, uh, this works reasonably well. Uh, it's, um, it's left bare metal at the moment with a little bit of paint left on it because um, uh, I can't easily get hold of my linisher uh, and I can't be bothered to sand it by hand. But eventually when I, get, when I can get near the machinery, I will um, sand it smooth and, uh, and chemically blacken it, so uh, it'll look a bit more professional. But uh, generally, I'm really quite chuffed with that. I've wanted one for years. Take care. See you next time.